Tom from Switch to Linux, you have really missed the mark, I think. Hey everyone, what's happening today? I'm kind of making a Sunday video to respond to something that Tom said on his channel, Switch to Linux. And we're going to go ahead and cut over to a clip from his video that was called Linux Mint, a distro that really listens to its users. And I'll link that video in the description below. I'd like you to listen to this. But going through, we actually have a starting with the Chromium and the Snap Store situation. And this is an interesting one as we're watching the development. Some people are saying this is unnecessary drama. No, it's not. Understand this, Ubuntu base is now pushing a proprietary store that they are not auditing the code for the applications they're in. And the applications they're in are not necessarily put together with the knowledge or approval of the people who wrote those applications. Some of them are of the team for that store. Some of them are random people on the internet. And that's the fundamental concern with the Snap Store. Now, the people that are yelling and saying, well, they're taking away choice. No, they're not. Ubuntu is the one taking away choice. Ubuntu is the one that is saying, you are using snaps, period. Now, there are a few things that Tom said that I personally take issue with. So let's go ahead, let's go over them. The first thing is, Linux Mint is definitely restricting the user's choice. There's just no other way to put it. Now, snaps have not been installed by default in Linux Mint for a long time. They just have not used them. In my opinion, you didn't have to go and block them from being installed from the repositories if the user so wanted to. Now it's more difficult to install snaps if you so choose to. You have to go in and run three commands in the terminal. I'll pop those up on the screen. Well, to me, that's unnecessary. Why do you need to block it from being installed by default if you don't install it yourself? To me, I think that's just plain stupid. That's, that's petty, that's stupid. The second thing is Ubuntu does not remove the choice from the user. Ubuntu does install the Snap Store by default. It has them enabled and uh, they don't use flat packs. However, you can remove SnapD from the system and not use Snaps. You're not forced to use it. Now, they did start packaging Chromium as a Snap only, and if you went into APT to install Chromium, it installed the Snap, and there was a little bit of an issue with that. I did take some issue. They should have declared that in APT, which they can, and I think they dropped the ball on that one and they still haven't corrected that and, and that can be a bit of an issue. But they do have a legitimate reason for packaging Chromium as a snap and stopped doing a Debian package for it. And, and that has to deal with dependency libraries and how uh, fast Chromium um, develops. And uh, we're not going to get into that. but. That can be an issue for some people, and I did take some issue with that. But you do not have to use snaps in Ubuntu if you don't want to. You can remove them. So let's go ahead and go over to the website for a second and see why Linux Mint has decided to drop snaps. Now I did go into it in another video. I'll link it up on the uh, up there, and uh, you can go over that video as well. But we're going to go into a little bit more detail here. They have got a little page called the Snap Store and why it's been disabled. And we're basically going to go on the criticism section, which is their criticism of the Snap Store. And uh, their main criticism is centralized control. And uh, we're just going to read this right here. Anyone can create APT repositories and distribute software freely. That is true. Users can point multiple repositories and define priorities. That is true. Um, the, thanks to the way APT works, if a bug isn't fixed upstream, Debian can fix it with a patch. Okay. So it's basically explaining how APT works. We'll, we'll go ahead and skip the rest of that. It says Flatpak isn't as flexible. Still, anyone can distribute their own Flatpaks. Flatpak isn't as flexible. Still, anyone can distribute their own Flatpaks. 
if FlatHub decides they don't want to do this or that, anyone else can create another Flatpak repository, otherwise called a remote, but we'll go into that. And we'll go, that's another video. Flatpak itself can point to multiple sources and doesn't depend on FlatHub. Yes, that is true. Okay. But now into the snap po portion of it. But now into the snap portion of it. Although it is open source, which SnapD is open source, Snap, uh, on the other hand, only works with the Ubuntu store. Nobody knows how to make a Snap store, and nobody can. The Snap client is designed to work with only one source, following a protocol that isn't open and using only one authentication system. SnapD is nothing on its own. It can only work with the Ubuntu store. This is a store we can't audit, which contains software nobody can patch. If we can't fix or modify software, open source or not, it provides the same limitation as proprietary software. Now this statement about SnapD is actually false. The part that is actually true is that SnapD does point to Snapcraft, which is the Snap Store. Now this is definitely a proprietary server. But uh, let's go ahead, let's go to the store right here and take a look at this. Now the Snapcraft store does include open source and proprietary software. We can't fix proprietary software, definitely not. However, it does also have some open source projects as well. And most people who package it do point to the developer's website where they get it. And they can also contact the developer who packaged it. So if there's a problem, you can have it patched. And let's just go to um, Snap Crafters. Like, let's uh, add them. This is packaged by Snap Crafters. You can contact Snap Crafters. And let's just go to Snap Crafters little issue right here. They have a GitHub page, package, GitHub page for their repositories where they build their snaps. They open their code up. Yes, you. they may not quote audit all code, but you can audit yourself, take responsibility for yourself. But the whole thing about it can only be pointed to Snapcraft, that is absolutely false. Ubuntu, who creates SnapD and the Snap Store, has a page right here that tells you how you can create your own Snap Store and how you can point SnapD to it. As you can see, I don't have a very high opinion of this particular choice that the Linux Mint development team has made. Quite honestly, I think them not installing SnapD by default was enough. You don't need to block it from users. And yes, they do provide a supported method of installing it, but why do we need to jump through a bunch of hoops? It was, it's unnecessary. And quite honestly, Linux is about choice. And you want know a lot of Linux users like me, and most of them actually, we don't need the developers of a distribution to hold our hands. If you like this video, go ahead and give it that thumbs up. If you don't, that's what that thumbs down button is for. And go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video. If you like my content and wish to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. The link is in the description. Also, if you wish to see more, check out the videos on your screen.